The National Institutes of Health report this, that 71% of adults get less than eight hours of sleep a night. We're part of that 71%, yes. and that lack of sleep could cause health problems. Nicole McGregor is live at a Valley Sleep Center to talk about how sleep affects our health. This is right up our alley, Nicole. I know, I'm getting <laughs> tired just thinking about it, Tram. <laughs> We're joined now by Lori Ledley. She is a sleep specialist here at the Valley Sleep Center. Good morning to you, Lori. Thanks for being here. Most people don't get enough sleep, but how much do we need? The recommended is seven to nine hours, but most people don't get that, creating what we call sleep debt. Okay, so do those power naps help out in that area? Absolutely. Whenever you don't get seven to nine hours, if you can take a nap during the day, that can actually add to that seven to nine hour time and make up for the sleep loss. Good to hear. Good to hear. What about sleep disorders? Are there certain people that have them more so than others? Yes, there's absolutely sleep disorders can be in anybody, but usually people who are obese are more prone to have what we call sleep apnea. Um, if you're getting seven to nine hours and you're still tired during the day, even after napping, you probably could have a sleep disorder. So you need to contact us or your physician and you might need a sleep study. And have some of these sleep studies that you have here. Okay, what about men and women? Do they need different um, hours each and every day? Men and women are both need seven to nine hours a day each. It's the same. Okay. Do some people need less? I hear some people say, oh, I can survive on four hours a night. I think they're crazy. <laughs> Usually the people who are saying that they need less are kind of flying on stimulants, that sort of thing. The recommended is seven to nine hours for the brain to restore all the bodily functions. Sleep loss can create many different kinds of uh, you know, fatigue during the day, your motor functions, your alert times, your, or your reaction times, your alertness is decreased. So it's very important that you get the full amount of sleep that you need. So it can be dangerous. Yes, absolutely. Uh, driving, drowsy is very, very dangerous, worse than drunk driving. Mm -hmm. If you ever feel yourself start to nod off, we call that micro sleep, and you need to pull over and take a nap. Is there a way that we can actually get too much sleep? Some people say they get nine or 10 hours a night and they're still tired. In fact, they're more tired than when they didn't have that. What's happening is they're probably waking up during a REM cycle, which can cause you to feel a little uh, groggy in the morning. There's also something called sleep inertia that can last up to a half hour when you wake up in the morning where you're a little more tired, but as you get going, that should resolve itself. And real quick, Lori, can you retrain your body to deal with waking up at three in the morning, let's say? Yes, absolutely. Go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, and if you're not getting that seven to nine hours, you can take naps during the day and that will make up for it. All right, Ledley, thanks for your time. Here are some other ideas on how to basically deal with sleep deprivation. These are some coping mechanisms. Have caffeine in the morning, have different foods throughout the day like fruits and veggies, maybe even some chocolate here or there. Do stimulating exercise, take those power naps we were talking about and stop talking about it. The more you talk about it, the more you focus on it, the more you're thinking about not getting the sleep you need. Focus on other positive things. If you want tips on how to sleep better, you can go to our website at news.azcentral.com and click on links. We are live in Phoenix. Try to sleep well tonight. Nicole McGregor, 12 News Today.